Hello, hello, hello. My name is Robert. I am the recovery guy and you have entered into the fix. I want to welcome you back to Recovery Guy Podcast. Of course, my name is Robert. I am the recovery guy and as always, very excited to sit in front of this microphone and share with you as we all come to know Uh, you know, my experience, strength, and hope with others that we might solve our common problem, right? And there's more that goes on in the preamble of Alcoholics Anonymous, but not everyone is alcoholic. Not everyone is drug addict. Uh, We all come for for different reasons why we are trying to go from broken to whole or, or to become well. It doesn't have to be as a result of an addiction, Um, to a substance, although that's where my journey began, right? Overcoming alcohol and drugs and everything else. Here's what I have found um, in my 34 plus years of personal recovery. Alcohol and drugs has not mattered to me for decades. It's been decades since I've been able to solve, as it says in the big book, to solve the drink problem, right? So, I I don't consider alcohol and drugs part of what I do, but what I do need to do and where you and I can find some common ground is regardless of where you come from, addiction or non-addiction, everyone has, as we talk about in the 12 steps, everyone has shortcomings. Everyone has limitations or blocks on beliefs. Everyone has defects of character. Every one of us has harmed someone we wish we didn't And now we need to figure out who they are, what we've done, and how to go back to do the best we can to make that right. There is so much more common ground between you and me than there is differences, because there's always going to be differences, aren't they? You know, we might have a difference in our gender. We might have a difference in our socioeconomic uh, upbringing. We will have a difference in our family dynamic. We're going to have a difference maybe in our ethnicity, in our particular um, view of life through that ethnic lens, right? So there's always going to be those things that are obvious or easy to understand as a, as a distinction or a difference, but it is a distinction without a difference. And here's why. At the end of the day, we all want to be a better version of ourselves. And we all know that there are barriers and boundaries that I'm going to talk about today that are going to prevent us from achieving those goals, right? Again, it has been over 34 years since I've had a drink or a drug. Alcohol and drugs is no longer my problem. You know what? In, in, the, 12, uh, in the 12-step program I'm involved in, it says, I have solved the drink problem. It says that I I now find myself easily able to control my desire for alcohol. I have recovered. I am well. Does that mean that there's not a myriad of things in my life that either were a wreckage of my past and I'm still trying to clean up or or have it become cleaner? No. The, The program of living is a program that demands rigorous honesty. And if you are honest the way we need to be honest, then I think you're going to understand the whole premise of today. And today's topic is removing the barriers and boundaries that hold us back. Removing the barriers and boundaries that hold us back. I came across this really cool book, and and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, because I want Amanda Palmer to tell her story, but it's a fantastic book. And I'm going to put the link to Amazon so you can either get it with your Kindle, um, if you're a Kindle or audio book person, or you can get a hard copy of it. But it's called The Art of Asking, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Let People Help. Profound title. It's a wonderful read. My hat's off to Miss Palmer. She hit the nail on the head. So I'm going to take that uh, book itself and sort of reframe it, rephrase it to boundaries and barriers, because that's what we're going to overcome. My, my dear friend and dear sponsor, Will, 
especially in the beginning, we would try to identify boundaries and barriers that were really preventing me from growing. Now, they never uh, culminated or added up to a, a physical relapse, but I relapsed emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and if I didn't get it fixed soon, I would have relapsed by going back out. But Will used to talk about, look, Bobby, it's not a barrier. It's not a boundary only if you make it be. Some of them are designed to go through and some of them are designed to go around, but none of them were designed to stop you from the bigger picture of what you were liking to achieve. Does that make sense? That was great wisdom then, back in 1986, and it's still wisdom that rings true To me, so huge shout out to Will, a happy, grateful, recovered alcoholic, my dear friend, the guy who let me sleep on his couch. And and I and I've told a story in the past. I was I was sleeping on his couch because it wasn't safe for me to be anywhere else. And quite frankly, I couldn't afford anyone else anywhere else because I was without Will, I was homeless. And so he he let me sleep on the couch. We only lived a few blocks from the Alano Club, the turning point in Las Vegas. Again, huge shout out to Steve and Buddy and Eddie and Scott and all the people who, Richard, who are still alive, who are still doing it, who are still helping me along my way. But but I remember sleeping on Will's couch and I was on the couch for, for a couple of weeks anyway. And one day Will came out to me and said, he says, Bobby, you do know that that's a convertible sofa, right? <laughs> So here I was sleeping on this uncomfortable couch, but it was pretty comfortable because it was indoors and 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 I had a place to be with people. So from that degree, it was comfortable. But he said, this is a convertible sofa. So so for the next few weeks until I could get back to work and afford my place, I, I pulled <laughs> I pulled it out and I slept on the bed. But a, but a great story. It's always good to laugh in recovery, isn't it? There's always a good things. It talks in the big book about Newcomers, you know, see us burst into merriment over seemingly tragic situations. And then it goes on to say, but why shouldn't we laugh for we have recovered, right? There, if newcomers could see no joy in our existence, they wouldn't want it. So if you're working with someone else along the way and helping them, I hope you're allowing them to see your joy and the things you've been able to accomplish because Recovery is a program, regardless of where you're coming from, secular, 12-step, religious, um, the Buddhist network, uh, it really doesn't matter. Newcomers, people who are new, they want to see us enjoying life. And that's why it even says that we insist on enjoying life, that we are sure that God wants us to be happy, joyous, and free. So again, I'll add the link. Go check out the powerful Amanda Palmer, The Art of Asking, How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Let People Help. So let's look at the two aspects, the two uh, uh, words of the the meat and potatoes of today's podcast. We're going to look at a boundary and we're going to look at a, a barrier. So I'll define them, give you some synonyms. And then we'll go in and, and discuss it just a little bit more. So a barrier, as defined, is something material that blocks or is intended to block passage. And I'm going to put this all in the notes, so don't worry about writing this down if you're driving or it's not convenient. I'll put this in the notes. You can copy it down to your notepad electronically or, or print it, whatever you want to do. But a barrier is something material that blocks or is intended to block passage. That's its intention, to block passage. Uh, Some of the synonyms for that are a barricade, right? Uh, A fence, a hedge, a wall. But again, something material that blocks. I also want to take this to a, a step further because... Even though this is the common um, Webster's uh, dictionary definition, barriers aren't always material. We, We always can't, we not necessarily can see them. Most of the barriers I have today 
are in the emotional, mental, and spiritual sense. I have very few physical barriers that interrupt my flow that prevent me from achieving something, right? I might have had a barrier, and just shoot back to Ms. Palmer again, I might have had a barrier based on what people would think if I would ask them to help me. Maybe that barrier, I, I just, I couldn't let you see me as a person who was needy. And trust me, I was pretty doggone needy. I was needy then. I still have needs that need to be met. Uh, the, the areas that I, that I need to be met aren't as disastrous or urgent as the, the, the needs when I was wondering if I was going to live or die. But that is a barrier for you to see me as vulnerable. And read the book, and you're going to find out a lot about Miss Palmer and, and what she overcame to be this powerful, undeniable, successful force. But it's a barricade, it's a fence, it's a hedge, it's a wall. Barriers are good, except when they allow the rise of boundaries that keep positive people, events, or concepts to help us. When when that barrier, because they can go both ways, right? Barriers are designed to keep some things in, which are good. We have a barrier, so... Um, so we can't we don't lose what we have but but those barriers having barriers can be very smart but again it's kind of like fear fear is a wonderful motivator fear can get my attention right fear only harms me if it prevents me from doing what I know I should be doing. And I love how Zig Ziglar puts it, fear is false evidence appearing real. So barriers are good except when they allow the rise of boundaries that keep positive people, events, or concepts to help us. Do you feel that? Do you, do you see where that can apply in or be something that you need to look at? And again, it may not be material. It could very well be an emotional barrier that you have with others. That wall that we put up that prevents others or, or a hedge. I, I, I consider a hedge or, or even my fence in my backyard, on one side, there's a, there's a block wall. On, on another side, running um, uh, horizontally, there is a, another fence, but it's got those slats in it so you can see through, but not very much. And then the other side is a chain link where you can see perfectly through it. They're, they're, they're all barriers that are intended to block passage, but each one has a different degree. The block wall I can't see on the other side at all, nor can people see me. The one behind my house or, you know, running horizontally um, or, or widthwise, um, I can see a little, but I can't make it out a lot. And then, and then right next door on the side of my house, the other side is the chain link where, where I can see my neighbors and their dogs and, and everything with an unfettered, even though it's a, it's a barrier, they are different degrees. So what's a boundary? And I'm not going to say that we don't need them in our life, but more often than not, 
they're unhealthy, especially in the beginning as we as we go down this road of recovery, we sort of pull everything back because now we're in a in a self-preservation mode. But a boundary is something that indicates or fixes a limit or extent. A boundary indicates or fixes a limit or extent or degree, as it were. Some of the words that go along with boundary are cap, like a, like a, a cap, it can only go high, like financial cap, uh, a ceiling, confines, right? Something restricted within a given area, an end, extent, once again, a limit, limitation, a line, or a termination where one thing stops and another comes in, like a almost like a a state line is is a boundary. It's you know when I go up to Idaho, there comes a point where there's a boundary where I'm terminating my time in Utah by going over this boundary that now says I'm in Idaho, right? So so once again. They're not as much as a physical boundary, but it is more emotional, mental, and spiritual boundaries, right? Because unless someone is going to physically harm me, and I do want to be sensitive to those who are involved in a in in a trap or or the the bondage of a um, of a physical relationship where you're physically harmed, um, if at all possible, run away as quickly as you can because no one should ever um, be harmed physically, Um, nor should we be harmed in the other ways because we all need to protect ourselves. But these types of boundaries I'm referring to usually keep us, just like, again, Ms. Palmer Keep us from being helped. Barriers and boundaries, once again, are good unless having them keeps positive people, positive events, positive concepts from entering into us. Because there are some pretty good things out there that we don't want to miss that having unhealthy barriers or unhealthy boundaries causes. So let's take a look at some things. And I just jotted some things down here. I got, I think, seven seven bullets that are just sort of random thoughts regarding this whole area of, of boundaries that would uh, prevent us from achieving or, you know, the combined with the barriers. So these can be in any order. Again, you know, accept them, reject them, apply them to whatever degree you can um, in any order that you can, because we all are in different phases and different places in our life. But I think these pretty much apply to all of us at one time or another. Here's the first one. Trust incrementally in respect to others and what you would share with them. If if we come from a very low trust, unhealthy boundary, unreasonable barrier position, and only you can say that for yourself. I don't know. I'm, I'm always looking, especially when I reject things or, or someone that I don't agree with presents something to me and I, and I don't know them enough. You know, I don't trust their motives. You know, it's, it's often said, uh, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So if there's someone who's approaching me or in my life, 
a situation, a person, a particular circumstance, uh, an event, uh, until I know a little bit more, I might not trust at all. But I can always trust incrementally, and that's just piece by piece, step by step. The next thing is, I now want to see what others do with the removing of those barriers or boundaries. So when I when I sort of slide that barrier aside, when I sort of loosen or lessen that boundary, what do they do with it? Right? Are they are they who are they who I want them to be or need them to be? Are they who they represented themselves to me to be? Are they friend or are they foe? Are they there to encourage me as a person to deepen my spiritual enlightenment, challenge me mentally, or love me on an emotional level? And then we always have to be careful of the people who would bring us physical harm. But if I, if I trust incrementally, then I can sort of step back and see what they do with that as I lessen the barriers and the boundaries. Then, and I think, Ms. Palmer, I think you're going to find in her book that there was a point where she realized, in most cases, what, what people think of her can't really harm her, and in this case, you. So realize in most cases, what people think of you can't really harm you. There were people who accepted her newfound freedom and lack of worry. And these individuals opened doors and helped her and and, and helped her promote. And she found one open door and went to the next and to the next and to the next. And the people who didn't get on board really didn't have any power over her because she didn't give him power. And nor should you because people can't harm me in most cases based on what they think. Now, that doesn't mean that a person gossiping or saying disparaging things, but we are more known by our behavior than what people think of us. People could say things about me all the time that I'm not committed to recovery, that I that I don't care about others, or I'm I'm not as kind as I portray myself to be, just like they could say things about you. But they might say things to others regarding that, and then those people would stop and say, wait a minute, that's not the Robert that I know, right? So be your true self and realize that as long as we're, we are being our true self, then what people really think of me as I lessen these barriers, remove these barriers and, and, and lower the boundaries or the walls, they, they really can't harm me. Because the next point is the gains we make will most always exceed the discomfort Sometimes the discomfort just comes from being new or unfamiliar. Sometimes the discomfort comes because we're making difficult choices along the way and we we have particular dilemmas that make us uncomfortable where a dilemma is there's there there's two things I can do but I can only choose one. Right? That's a dilemma. And sometimes letting go of the one option is painful and it causes me discomfort because I have to leave something or someone behind. But I know there is so much more to gain by gravitating to this new way of living. The next one is don't let something or someone be the reason you don't succeed. Sadly enough, and I, I was talking about this to um, 
the, the participants at Annie's house this last Wednesday in my Zoom meeting. And, and I let them know because a few people were going back to their family for reunification. And, and Scott and Melissa will tell you this as well with um, the Welcome Home Sober Living in Southern California. There are people who won't want you to succeed. Go figure, right? Stephen Covey would talk about it as the deficiency mentality where they, they view life as a, as a pie and they don't realize that the pie is big enough to feed everyone regardless of the appetite. They view the pie as being very restricted. And so them seeing you succeed means that there's less for them to succeed with. And so they might try to sabotage or get in the way or put up a barrier or a boundary to your success. Don't let something or someone be the reason you don't succeed. Let it be an opportunity to invoke other abilities as they become available to get through or around that person or that circumstance or that thing so you can be successful. Here is one of the most important things that I have learned along the way. Give others a chance. We talked about that. Here's where we want to take it to. I want to identify and then surround myself with people who can be trusted. Surround yourself with people who can be trusted. This is so important to have a group of friends who you can trust to tell you when you are doing well and support you and help you get back on track when we get a little off course. Of course, we need to trust them from incrementally, now in great respects, right? As we started out, trust incrementally in the beginning. But I want to surround myself with people who I can trust. Because I'm going to ask them my opinion. And I do this with my daughters. Obviously, I do this with Laura. I do this with my my friend Steve. I do this, of course, with Will and, and Angie and Wendy and, and all of my friends with Chris T. You know, I say, hey, see if I'm on track. You know, I do it with Pablo, with Jane, with, with, uh, with JJ, with John. I do it all around me. I'm surrounding myself with people who I can trust. Because sometimes they might help me see a barrier or a boundary that I need to adjust or remove on both sides of the equation to achieve the success that I want. While I'm doing all of this, I want to keep, and this is the final point, keep your eye on the prize or the goal. Never become distracted by what the real purpose is, right? Like my real purpose in my life in general, as I say time and time again, become the best possible version of me. That's my goal. That's my overall goal. Now, it's made up by by incremental things that I do along the way, but that's my goal. My goal is to become a vessel, an instrument that can prove himself to be most effective with and for you. Now, to do that, I need to surround myself with people who trust me, who say, now, you know, John Barker is fabulous for this. He'll say, he'll say, now, give me this, give me that. Here's the content we want to develop now. Go ahead and talk on this. Go ahead and talk on that. He is in my circle, and he is part of the goal. He knows where we want to go in our recovery movement. And the same thing with Pablo as he was telling me to develop uh, more concepts and, and, and ideas and thoughts on how to describe what we're trying to do at recoveryguy.org. And then he would put them into our, to our website to sort of repurpose or, or reestablish our vision, our goal, right? So it's broken up incremental, in, in, incrementally. There's a lot of different pieces, a lot of different moving parts to my overall goal. But my goal is always to be the best possible version of me so I can be most equipped 
to help you along the way. So we trust incrementally. We see what others do with the removing of the barriers or the boundaries. We realize in most cases what people think can't really harm me. Remember the gains that we that we can make most always exceed any discomfort along the way. Don't let something or someone be the reason you don't succeed. Conversely, surround yourself with people who can be trusted. Remember, misery just doesn't love company. Misery loves miserable company. So I don't surround myself with people who don't view life with their cup half full. They're not in my circle. I don't exclude them. They they can come and go. They usually don't hang out much, right? I believe that that receiving goes hand in hand with my giving. I give as much as I can because I want to receive. I don't wait to receive without giving because I've got it flipped. I got it twisted if I if I take that approach. So I surround myself with people who can be trusted and again, who can even help elevate me. Finally, I keep my eye on the prize, the goal, the prize is that feeling, waking up in the morning and say, you know what, let's get at it. Yesterday wasn't perfect, but it was pretty doggone good. Let's go toward that goal again. And when I do that in respect to barriers and boundaries, as Tom Bennett would say, I am weller than the well. Don't you want to be that person that regardless of how much better we can be tomorrow, tomorrow isn't here. I have today to be the best possible version of me that I can possibly be that will help me help others today understanding when boundaries and barriers are to help me, not to keep me in bondage. And I hope you find these truths for you as well. Thank you again for going to recoveryguy.org, Recovery Guy Podcast, the major podcast channels, Recovery underscore Guy, the Recovery Guy on Facebook. Message me, email me, let me know what you think so we can continue to develop relevant content. Remember, we did not get sick together, but together we get well. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Robert, and I am the Recovery Guy. I was trying-